What's up? So I was listening to my videos. <laughs> I was listening to my videos where I am. Um, uh, where I didn't. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, use use this, which I did in the last one. And um, yeah, we found out. Well, I found out that he's basically the same as me. So he's gonna be the other. Like, I'm gonna go unlock the door. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't need to do it. Um, I did do one of the question sheets. I did do the algebra question sheet, but um, I just turn that light off. I'm just gonna pretend I'm on. Um, uh, nope, that's too bright. Turn it off. Yeah, great intro. Um, basically, it was dead because I was basically reading off of the screen there, and then there's a lot of copying and looking around. And it's kind of hard to explain. You you don't see anything. You basically just see me going. You know, it's it's nothing. I and even though it was for you, that sort of thing is no point because there's no even. It's sorry for me. Even though this entire thing is basically just for me to revise. There's nothing here. No point. So, whereas this one, it helps me. It's basically like me teaching it. So if I can explain it out loud. Helps me. So um, yeah, we got more algebra. That'll be fun. So I'm gonna try and do once again three lectures: lecture four, five, and six. Um, yeah. And then admittedly, then I'm, I do need to um try and catch up a bit. Got some more washing to do that later. Um, I need to catch up a bit with um all of this, as in. I, there's like a gap. Uh, all the ones that I'll be doing now, or the there's like seven I think I've done. Um, uh, lecture notes I've taken after the lecture, and then I've started managing to do them in the lecture again. But it does mean that there's um there's a gap of about five or six lectures. Those meeting notes on, so I'm gonna do that relatively soon. Hopefully on the weekend or something. To be fair, once I've run out of the algebra lectures, I can then move on to analysis and methods. Oh. Methods to treat. And other stuff like that, really. Yeah. So I didn't get the answers then. I will. I will do that at some point, probably later tonight. And yeah. On to Algebra Lecture 4. So, I don't think I even, did I, I think I may have reached this one. I did, I reached this one. I didn't go further than that, I don't think. Or did I? Did I, I did. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. So, uh, is the function a to b? Uh, by the way, I have I have my two lectures, so it's I record the other ones around three. It's just about eight p.m. now, so I took a two-hour gap after my last um, thing just to chill. You, you need that, you know. Ah, but it's back on the grind. So, um, if f is a function from a to b and g is a function from b to c, we did the composite. Figured that one out. Um, for any set A, there's an identity function. The identity of A goes from A to A such that it maps from A to A. So, I should have grow. I've lost some paper. I'm going to leave that instead of all those tabs. Um, so, basically, what it is is you have, uh, so you have f of x. Well, you have x, okay? And instead of changing it from let's say, um, x to f of x. So you, you have, like, you're subbing a random value x um, into a function x plus 3x plus, plus 2, and then out pops f of x. This is, you sub in an x. Uh, uh, you, you could still have a function, but that function would not change the x. So you sub in a 3. Um, 
I'm pretty sure what it means is you sub in a three, and then a three will come out. Or like any value in A, um, you put it through the function, and another value in A will come out such that that value will be mapped to itself. So if you have, you sub in an X, an X will come out, and then such that the little, uh, basically, I think what I said last time, it's a pointless function. It has no use. It's really just, you know, X to X such that X maps to X. There's really nothing else to it. Um, yeah. I don't know much else I can say about it really. Um, I think I think that that's all I can really think about what it means. Okay, so it's so any set A is an identity function that basically does it to itself. That is pointless. From what I can tell, it just does it to it. It maps itself to itself. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. You know. Um, if f goes from A to B with any function, then f composite with the identity equals f, which makes sense, because if you have f going from a to a, well then f of f of being identity, you know, you sub in a, in that goes from a to a, which then goes to b, so f goes from a to b, therefore you you can rub out, because if you if you have the function f going from a to b and the and the identity of a going from a to a. Well, we did last time that like g f of x is, um, you go a to b and then b to c, therefore you can a to c. This is you going from a to a and then a to b, so that you can get rid of it all. It's just a to b, which is already f, which is the same as the identity of b. So that would mean you go from a to b. And then from that B, with the identity B, you go to B, which is, um, again, get rid of the middle, and it's just A to B, which is F. There you go. Um, all right, for any subset X in A, there's an inclusion function, uh, which is X to A such that X maps to X. Right. So this is, we know that if X is a subset of A, everything is everything in x is in a okay so this is basically saying you can take a random point in x apply a function to it so say you say little x is three um if you sub in uh i don't know kind of like um x x plus four x plus four no x plus nine take so if we're assuming x is little x three, um, and you put it into the function um, x squared plus x minus three, okay, this is purely for three. It wouldn't work for anything else. X squared plus x minus three. That then is the same. No, it's not. If you <laughs> x plus x squared minus 9, x squared plus x minus 9, right, start over, so if you have a little x and you turn it to f of x, okay, and we're going to assume x is 3 in this case, just for this case, and then you have x squared plus x minus 9, okay, then you solve the function, so x is still equaling the f of x, okay, and then, so for in this case, it would be 3 squared plus 3 take away 9, which is 9 plus 3 take away 9, which is 3. So therefore, you've had little x, and by applying the function, you've mapped it to itself. And that's pretty much what this is. You, you have everything in x is in a, so it's basically, it's like the identity. It's basically like the identity, but for subsets, because the identity is you do it to itself. But considering all of x is in a, you're technically doing that anyway because you're doing all of x to a, where all of x is contained such that um, a point in x is mapped to itself in the next one. So it's like, it's basically the identity 
um, function, but instead of doing it to itself, you're doing it to its kind of parent function. It's you're basically doing it to what it's a subset of. Probably a name for that, but I don't know what you'd call that. Right. Yep, that's all good. Um, right. If you do a graph of the inclusion, and we knew we figured out that graph is just a, a, a pair, a pair. So, like we did, we knew Cartesian is x, y, and a graph is basically such that you have an. Oh no, that was a cross b. A cross b is pairs. A graph is basically just points on a graph. <laughs> so the graph of the inclusion rule. So the graph equals the set of the pair x and little a such that um, they are both in x cross a where little a equals x. Okay. What this means is uh, the graph is basically just you're finding a point in the xy, so we'll, we'll pretend a is y in this case. So you have the point xy which is in x cross y, which we know is just all the pairs that they can be, such that x equals y. So yeah, it's, it's basically, the graph of it is basically the inclusion. So if you, if a, for instance, uh, was the set of one, two, three, and then x was the subset of two, four, six then um you could do the the graph of the inclusion of you put of just the inclusion you don't put any x or any next to it well that would equal here x and a in x cross a such that a equals x which in this case we have a one two three and a two four six. You have a two and a two. Therefore, it equal two two, and that's it because one three four six. None of them equal each other. Right. I mean, I understand that. I need to remember that. So, a lot of this will a lot of this will actually have to be just me going through it in my head. I'm like trying to remember it. But there's um, a lot of books on algebra. Um, right. So since the subset, since we know the empty set of a subset of any set, um, there's an inclusion of the empty set domain because that makes sense. But the thing with that is in the other inclusion, you've had the inclusion of x to a such that uh, little x maps to little x. Or you can do x maps to a where x equals a. But um, here, you can't do that because the empty set has <laughs> no elements. So the inclusion is the empty set to A, and that's it. There's no, there's no further on with that, which makes sense. Um, right. Additionally, uh, if you do the subset cross A, well, we know, again, that that's just any pairs. Since there's no elements in the empty set, um, that just equals the empty set. Oh yeah, so with the graph, it equals the set of the pair to do. Whereas um, this, whereas with the empty set, if you cross it with a, uh, well first off, you, you can write the same thing, so x a such that x is in the empty set, a is in the, the set a. Since x is never in the empty set, it's just going to equal the empty set again. Because there's no pairs, and if there's no pairs, there's nothing in the set, therefore it's an empty set. Right. So there's only the only subset of the empty set is the graph of the empty set. Ugh. Ugh. That's when they equal each other. Because uh, the graph is any pair. So if you graph the empty set, I think I'm going to do this in elementary or something. 
Um, yeah, so the empty set goes from the empty set to the empty set. So it's basically the um, identity matrix. And um, yeah, it's, you know, you graph the empty set e equals the empty set. Therefore, a subset of the empty set is the graph of the empty set because they equal each other. And if you equal yourself, you subset yourself. That makes sense. Right. So, right. So for any subset of A, which is called X in this case, and function of A to B, the restriction F restricted to X um, of X to B is given by F restricted to X of F inclusion X. Right, because do this. Figure this one out. Oh. Oh, way too long hair, man. Look at that. It's ridiculous. Right. Because I know you can't actually hear these. Basic the only way to hear these to um is to, is to wear these. Or well, I listen to it. I listen to it through these. And you can hear it quite well if you do that. You know, food for thought. Uh, right. So, um, I do like the way they did this. So, if you want to get, we have an it's a triangle thing. So you have x, b, and a. To get from x to a, a to b, and x to b. Well, to go from x to a, we know x is a subset of a. So you can use the inclusion. Um, to get from a to b, we know that's just f. And to get from x to b, uh, you can restrict f to x. So restrict, from what I can tell, if you restrict something to x, what you're doing is um, you're basically, because if x is a subset of a, then all of x is in a, and f restricted to x means that you're restricting the, the beginning of f to only what's in x. So you disregard, so you know, if x is the set of 1, 2, and then a is the set of 1, 2, 3, then f restricted to x, meaning means you can only use the 1 and 2, and the 3 you have to just disregard it. And therefore you're then, that then becomes um, the subset to whatever it is going to originally be. Because they can still go to B. It just means that they go with one less um, element. Although, the thing about this which I want to ask for algebra to be list. I'll make a neater list because I've got how to do the tutorial and I'd really like to just get a um, just got to tell them got to, got to degrade and tell them what I'm confused about. Um, right, so the thing is, the restricted to kind of looks similar to um, the division symbol. Well, not like division is in A over B. It's like more one now where it's like uh, the, the A divides B. So I don't really understand that, but. Hopefully I will after I go through all these lectures. Oh, right. And then, yeah, so then f restricted x equals f of the inclusion because the inclusion is just, you know, subset to what it is subset of. So then, you know, all right, inclusion goes from x to a, f goes from a to B, therefore that's x to B, which you denote as f restricted to x. Boom. That way, if this is honestly going to change all of this, f g of x, you know, if g goes from A to B and then f goes to C, you can even know it's A to C. That's the way I'm so proud of myself to figure this out. Right. Um, F of, if you have a function.
function f is a to b, image is a subset of b, and it is it's image of f, I mean. So the image of f subset b, so the image of f equals the set of a little b in b such that b is f of a, or some a in a, which is another way of saying there's a little b in b such that there exists an a, a little a in a, such that b equals f of a. And the way it's done is, oh, I've written on the wrong sheet. That's now just a mess of scribbles. Trying to read this thing. So the image, the image is, so if, we, if instead of doing, we're going to do x and y here. So x is in a, y is in b. So it's um, you have a y in b such that y equals f of x where x is in a. It's basically what it's saying. Well, there exists an x in a such that y equals f of x. So the image is basically just like your average function, you know? Well, the way they've done it is um, you have what's like f tilde, which is like f in 49. Oh, sorry. I changed trousers from my, um, like, you know, like my really stretchy and smooth trousers. In fact, I'm going to change into them right now. So, BRB. I'm back. Changed into them. It's like these, like, they like stretchy and stuff. I don't know what you call them, like, um, tracksuit bottoms, kind of thing. Um, you also notice that the um, thing is gone. That's because I filled this. Can you see it? Just on the end there, it was there. I moved it a bit. That's because I'm in bloody drink and I was thirty years behind. You might be thinking, why is there an ominous blue light coming from up there? Um oh, got a rep man city. Yeah, it's basically just a oil light. Not much else to it. Although there's a wire dangling. Just Aim this up. Just a, just a little wire dangling. So you don't get in the way. It's only done harm. So. I feel what? Oh no, I'm also going to put on my slippers. I, you see how well prepared I am. Right. Um, okay, so they say F tilde such that you have A going to the image of f such that um, a maps to f of a. Right. Or, so basically what's saying is f tilde, so we have to the image, because you know to get f tilde you have to define the image, um, the image is basically y equals f of x. That's the, from what I can see it says little b and b such that b equals f of a where a is an a and then it's gone f a to b so if you if you little a is x little b is y that's saying there's a y such there's a y in b such that y equals f of x it's like a reverse you know the image of f so if you that's all i can think of it's like the reverse because Normally we've done um, such that there's an f of x that equals y. And this is saying there's a y that equals f of x. So I'm pretty sure the image is just, there's something from here where you apply a function and get back, you can get a function of x. So, you know, if you have uh, uh, f from a to b, and then over the top of that, you have um, uh, x plus 3. Oh, no, I'm trying to keep it simple. You know, you sub in, you sub in an x in a, and out pops an f of x in b. Well, this way, um, they're saying you, sub, um, you can sub in a y in b, such that you'll get a function in x. 
So then the way to that would be y minus 3. And then you'd have, uh, see, then you'd sub in your y and out would pop. Um, ooh, wait, no, they're saying you've been doing x to f of x. That's the way we've been doing them f of x to y. Oh, no, we've been doing y equals f of x. Yeah, so now it's right. Yeah, I was right. So before you have a random x, you put it into a function, you come up, you it comes out with f of x, which is y. Here, we're saying you sub in a y, um, and what should come out is an f of x. It should be a function of x. So this is basically saying y equals f of x. So it's the reverse, right? So we've been subbing in an x. We've been saying that y is equal to f of x. So we're saying you sub in an x and you get an f of x. That's basically what we've been saying. You sub in an x, you get a function of x and b, and that function of x we've been defining as y. Whereas this is saying uh, there exists something in b, and we're going to call it y, such that it equals f of x. So, hmm. Might not make much sense. You make me not be able to speak. Um, that doesn't make much sense. Sorry. Oh, tight. Hmm. Clearly, keeping is professional as always. Um, you can see how good I am at revising as well. Just check out some things for me. Ah, oh, fail percent to each. Okay, well, we're not even going to try and sign it. Because I'll leave it in my drafts for a future time. So now I'm just checking my home screen. <sighs> Great. Well, only one way to get rid of a phone. Throw it away. Um, I'm intrigued to see how good that looks, actually. Um, right. So image of, before this, it's been x goes to f of x. You have an x and a, you put it into a function, and out comes that function of x, which is f of x. This is saying you can sub in some y in b, where it then equals the function of x. So what? There exists an x in A such that equals f. There exists an x such that y equals the function of x. Well, isn't the image then basically? I don't understand. Oh, I'm going to the list. I'm going to write a new list. Our list is beyond. beyond. Sorry about that one. All but fresh. Right, so we have um uh, right, so we have the first one, which was x in A implies x in B wording slash meaning, and I think that was to do with subsets. So there's an x in A uh yeah, that's to do with subsets. Um, you've got b to the power of a, and that's where it sets next to that, but that's basically, I don't understand what it has to do with anything, I don't know why they mentioned it. Um, you have f rel x, such that a goes to 0 and 1, if you don't know what that means, and we have, um, Restricted versus uh, division. I'm just going to write that. Right. So now, if I to add image uh, equal what? Just my question back, exclamation mark, because I don't understand the image. So then f tilde is, so we assume we understand the image, we're going to assume we know what it means. Um, f tilde 
event and go from A to the image, which is um, Y, such that uh, X can be mapped to F of X. And this is saying that F is another way of saying uh, the inclusion composite with F tilde, because we can do this. F tilde goes from A to the image of F, okay? And the inclusion, we go from like a subset, if I'm right, yeah, a subset to A. How does that use? F goes from A to B? Oh, image of F is a subset of B. Well, but the inclusion goes from the subset to the other. Oh, I to be in here in the middle of the graph, yeah. Okay. So this is basically saying, I don't understand. I'm going to write, I'm going to put next to image. And once I understand image, I should be able to get F tilde. I think this is a. I don't know, I'm going to watch the um, lecture on that and I'll make a plug for the update video once I understand it. Anyway, um, right, and they do have another triangle, but you really need to understand image and F tilde to understand it, so there's no point even doing it now. Um, all right, so if you let, if you have the function, if the function A to B, Sorry, I'm not even I'm not even in center. Let me shuffle across here a sec. Nope. My washing railing is just falling on top of me. Okay. Right. Completely off center. I would turn the camera, but it might be able to get a little bit more. Well, you had a bit of slide one, didn't you, guys, last time? There you go. I think that's how I had it last time. Anyway. Uh, I just looked at the camera because I've been looking at myself for so long. Um, so you have F from A to B. Um, that's a function, obviously. So that's an injection when for all X and Y and A, F of X equals F of Y, such that X equals Y. And subsequently, all x and y in a, x does not equal y, implying f of x does not equal f of y. Hmm? I'm not very good at explaining these, am I? Why my notes are mean? F is an injection when you ha that hasn't even mentioned b. That's what I don't understand. Um, f is an injection. When for all x and y and a, right, so you have you have an x and a y in a, on which I'm just gonna assume that they are just two random things, you know. Just two random numbers or two random integers. But then that means that then oh no it does it does right, we're gonna get an issue of paper. This is also why I need one of those um, touch screen laptop things because I won't have to burn through so much of this. It's a waste now. In fact, I will go back to recycling because I'm a good person. Um, so this basically means you have two random things in there such that if you sub x into a function, uh, fx will pop out. And if you sub y into a function, um, f of y will pop out and they are going to equal the same thing which would imply that x equals y and it also says subsequently um, for all x and y again in a if x does not equal y that implies f of x does not equal f of y so what's that that's basically just saying um, First off, before I do anything, 
uh, total order for shaking. Uh, I probably should add some thumbnails to these videos. I haven't added any recently. Um, yep, all of these have been me, it's always good. Um, image functions images class right what's this done it's just showing me projection not suggestion yep great that's what i wanted i need i need here we go wordpress a blog that must mean that they at least have some idea what they're doing Um, the right y certificate how do we do this it's not just like if i was going to write something like that i'd skip to the point you know oh here we go uh set theory all right and then we're just gonna quickly search for the word A function, a function in set theory word is simply mapping of some element from set A um, to set B. Um, the collection of all possible outputs is referred to as a codomain, while the collection of actual output elements in B mapped from A is known as the image. So the image is the collection of outputted elements in B. So I was right, it's, it's not, it doesn't mean much. Cool. There you go. Right, in that case, then F of, F of tilde is A to the image of F, but the image of F is just um means pretty much nothing it just means that x equals or y equals f of x um so that's then mapping a it's basically mapping a to b from what i can tell f tilde is basically just mapping a to b i'm still going to watch the lecture just, just to check it but that's all i can tell yeah i bet better turn on camera again so you can see my Beautiful face. <sighs> Another chemistry bottle. Um, I need to wash that. Probably I'll finish that and I'll give you a rest. Um, right. So an injection makes sense, really x equals y so right, a set can have um i don't know you can have the pair no well it's implying that x equals y but i thought we learned that in the first one that a set of one one two is the same as a set of one two right i'll add that to the list oh this list is just going to get bigger and bigger Actually, no, no, I will not. I will do that. That's what I will do. Injections, surjections, and bijections. There we go. From wikibrilliant.org. Right. That'll be the lot of us. Right. Right. Here we go. f of x to y be a function. f is injective, is distinct element of x. Are mapped to distinct elements of y. That is, if x1 and x2 are an x such that x1 don't equal x2, then f of x1 does not equal f of x2. What? Um, you have distinct elements of x mapped to distinct elements of y. We've we've got that far, so that's you know, a function of a to b such that a little a goes to a little b. 
that is if you take two bits of that, so x1 and x2 are in x such that x1 does not equal x2, then f of x1 does not equal f of x2. Oh, so it's saying each each um, element in B has a unique unique element in A such that no other element can map to it. Great, that makes sense. Actually, <laughs> it actually does make sense. That's actually kind of mad. Right, f is a surjection when for all y and b uh, there exists an x and a such that f of x equals y. i.e. the image of f is equal to b. So the image of f is y equals f of x. So we're saying y equals f of x is equal to b. Hmm. What does this say about surjections? Maybe I'll just use this. Let f of x, y be a function. f is surjective if every element in y is the image, and we learnt that, oh, we learnt the image of y f of x is at least one element of x. That is, the image of f is equal to y. Right, and they've written it here in the same way we have. Right, so, what does it mean? I think it means the, every element in B has at least one element in A mapping to it. Every element of Y in the image has at least one element of X. Yeah. So what we're saying is every element in the domain, I think it's the domain, it's pretty sure it's the domain, um, has at least one element in the codomain that maps to it. So there can be more than one. Right understand surjection and bijection which is a two way they describe it um every element of y is the image of exactly one element in x right so um so what injection is every element of x maps to its own unique thing in sorry every element in a maps to its own unique thing in b so that means that Say if A is a subset of B, everything in A can map to a unique thing in B, so that would be injective. It would not be surjective, as you'd still have the things in B that aren't being mapped to. And then bijection is basically when they equal each other, so everything in A can map to its own unique thing in B, and everything B is being everything in B is being mapped to at least once. Right. So the function of real to real numbers such that x goes to x squared, right, without looking at the answers. If you sub in everything in x cannot map to a unique thing in x squared because um, you have 2 and minus 2, for instance. Um, everything in b cannot be mapped to as well because these negatives. And it's not bijective because it has to have, yeah, at least both of them, I think. Um, right. So if x is a subset of a, the inclusion function x to a is injective, which is what I just said. Um, yeah, the inclusion of x equals x, therefore inclusion of x implements the inclusion of y. What? What's the inclusion of x? The inclusion is a subset of x to a such that x maps to x. This is saying, therefore, the inclusion of x, first off, therefore the inclusion of x is equal to x. If x is a subset of a, then the inclusion of x going to the inclusion function of x to a is injective as the inclusion of x equals x. Y. 
Why does the inclusion of x, little x is a subset of big X, which is a subset of A. The inclusion function maps that subset to what it's a subset of. And this is basically saying that that entire function is equal to an element of x. Hmm. Doth not maketh sense. Right. Um, inclusion x equal x. Right. Um, doesn't make sense to me. If x equals the empty set, um, it's still true. That there can't be any x and y such that f of x is coming from. So yeah, injectivity is basically um, if both if x equals if uh, something in A equals something in B, then then they'll have the exact same thing. Then they'll be the same. Oh, if they're not the same, they won't match the same thing. Right. Um, of x, yeah, and if x is the empty set, apparently that's still true, doesn't make sense. That entire paragraph doesn't make sense. Um, right, so you're given the function f of a to b and g from b to c, as we know, g o f would equal um, the function a to c. Yeah. Um, right, if f and g are injective, so if f if everything in a have its own unique things mapped to in b and everything in b maps to at least its own thing in c then g of f is as well which makes sense because if everything in a has its own unique thing in b and everything in b has its own unique thing in c well then you can really just get rid of the a <laughs> because that's that's basically saying look you have you have one two three in a 1, 2, 3, 4, and B, and 1, 2. I've written in the wrong one again. It's fine, we'll just commit to it. Fill it in again, another one. Okay. Everything in A, that's its unique thing. So 1 maps to 1, to an F. Uh, 1 maps to 1, 2 maps to 2, 3 maps to 3, etc. You know, uh, A to B. B to C. 1 still maps to 1. 2 still maps to 2, 3 still maps to 3. And then you've also got four mapping to four from B to C. Well then, if one is mapping to one, if every everything in B has its a unique thing it can map to in C, then whatever's mapping to that uniquely, oh, I don't have to explain. I can't explain it out loud, but I understand it. It's kind of like um, if you uh. Everything in A, I'm just gonna keep repeating myself until I figure out a way to say it. If everything in A can map to its own unique thing in B, then you know nothing's being shared. Everything still has its own unique way. Okay. But then and then, and then if everything in B has its own unique thing in C, then there's still no sharing has happened because A is there's one thing in A has gone to B, and that one thing in B has then gone to something in C. And it's, it's basically like saying, yeah, G O F, G composite F is, you know, G F of X. G F of X is its own unique function, different from G, different from F. But we know that F of X, um, or the function of X, is injective, one thing to its unique thing. And then g of x is injective, that thing can then map to its own unique thing. Therefore, g f of x is basically that can map to its own unique thing, that can map to its own unique thing. Therefore, that can map to its own unique thing. It's basically just getting rid of the middleman. If that's in, if f, g, and f, if a, b, and c are injective, you, you get rid of b, a and c are still injective, it doesn't change anything. I understand it. I don't know how to explain it, but I understand it, and that's all that matters. Well, it doesn't. If you're actually trying to use this to revise, which I don't think will be the case, 
Um, you may have been able to understand the way I described it there, but if not, maybe. Um, right. They're the surjective, then is it so we decompose it up again? Then if everything here is mapped to at least once, and everything here is mapped to at least once, then no matter what you sub in to C, it's always going to go to its everything in C is always going to be mapped to at least once. Therefore, everything in A is going to be mapped to its own unique thing in C. I want to find a good way to explain this. If you have um, in a football and bucket, if you have three rows of buckets, um, so like we'll say these are tunnels, you, you can kick A uh, and each uh, each ball only fits into a re one retrospective um, tunnel. We'll say like that. This is for injectivity now. Um, that small ball, say you have a small, medium and large, the small ball can only fit into the small hole, okay? And then um, that hole would only be able to fit into a bucket in this. Oh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Right, we'll try and do it like this. So you have a ball, slightly bigger ball, and a huge, I'm drawing it by the way. Don't question my balls, they're not great. Um, there you go, and you have the tunnel. All right. Oh, that's slightly small. And then you have that. Okay. And then we have big tunnel, bigger tunnel, huge tunnel. Okay. Let's see if I'm going to lie in. I can't really see this. Right. So you have bowl, 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 um, tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. Uh, uh, like bucket, 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 oh, hole, 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 hole. So this ball, okay, is, even though it could technically fit into there, we're just going to pretend that for some reason it can't, but you have to be, a, you have to be that big to get through it. Um, this ball can only go through there. That can only go in there. Therefore, that can only go in there. Whereas the medium ball can only go through the medium tunnel. Okay, that medium tunnel could only fit in the medium hole. Therefore, the medium ball can only fit in the medium tunnel. And again, for the large, you've got a huge ball. It will only be able to fit through this one tunnel. It can only fit through the large tunnel. The only hole that tunnel would even be able to fit into is this big boy here. Then it just stands to reason that that big uh, ball will only be able to fit into the big hole. All right. There you go. Holes, holes and tunnels. That's all I had to think of. I'm on a wheelie chair by the way, which is why I keep going back and forth. I think I said that in the last one, but I'm saying it again. You know, subjectivity uh, is everything's mapped to at least once. Right. So you have two small, two medium, and two large. Then you have their tunnels, retros you have the tunnel. Uh, okay, and then you have the hole. All right. So this says everything here can be mapped to at least one. So I've simplified it down. Uh, balls, uh, tunnels, holes. This is basically Small, we'll start at the bottom actually, it makes much more sense. Big balls, okay. They both of those balls are gonna hold the sheet. Just gonna hold the sheet. These balls can map to can both fit in there, okay? And then oh they're all fantastic to me. And then we could fit many of them into there. Because subjectivity is basically multiple of these goes to at least one of these. So if we say two, both of these can go into at least one of these, 
Okay. Uh, individually, no. But while I'm saying it, uh, one of these, or you could fit multiple tunnels. You know, this bigger could fit into this one. We're just going to assume that that's like infinite hole. Then you know, vice versa. That I can go for my other lad. I do. Now, this one doesn't really work as activity. Um, but yeah, if you can have a certain amount of these, if any of these tunnels can be hit, can be filled by at least one ball, and then any of these holes can be filled by at least one of these um, tunnels. Well, then if you're getting multiple of these in there, multiple of these in there, then multiple of these can fit in there. Boom. And then by activity, well, it's a mixture of the two really. One ball, one tunnel. One hole, that uh, ball can fit into the tunnel, which can fit into the hole there, so that ball fits into the hole. Whereas injectivity, I should have mentioned that you can have multiple tunnels. Okay, so there's like five tunnels here, but this little ball is only going to fit into one of those tunnels, which is only going to fit into one of those holes. Okay. Whereas this is, there's one tunnel. There's one ball, there's one hole, and they all fit into each other. Art, right there. Right. I'll move the proofs. I'll have to move that around. Um, right. Um, right, for an X and Y in A, so that the composite of G O F is equal to G O F of Y. Because we know that f and g are injective, uh, you can say that g o f g o f x equals g o f y. Um, then you can assume that g f of x equals g f of y, which implies that f of x equals f of y, which implies f of y. Okay. Why drink when you can do math? Um, right, to prove the subjectivity rule, um, for any point Z in C, there exists uh, Y in B such that um, G of that equals, it's like F of X equals Y, so F of Y equals Z type thing. But since G is subjective, um, that means there exists an X such that X um equals y equals f of x equals y so if we can if we assume so we assume g is subjective subjective therefore uh, the function of y equaling z um then um if f is also subjective then you you have to assume there's an f of x that equals y and therefore the composite of G O F of X is G F of X and F of X equals Y, which equals uh, G of Y. Uh, G of Y we know equals C, or I think I was saying F of Y. So it's in the function G from B to C, it's going to be G of Y. We know that equals C, and therefore this is subjective in a sense. Then the F is if you want to do a bijective, literally hit him with the injective, smash him with the projective and finish with the bijective. And that's that. So right now, I'm just planning on trying to understand it. Like this week is going to be mainly me trying to understand all of this and then I'll start memorizing everything a little bit later on, you know? Mm. Um, Although what I might do is after I've done lectures five and six, um, I'm going to try and after I've done all the work I've got to do tonight, because I've also got to do some programming and um, uh, problem sheets uh, and my washing. Although I can stick my washing on, do my problem sheets. 
well, I'm saying that obviously it's all take about two hours. Because, you know, we get like a 1 a.m. Uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. night again. It's going to be fun. Uh, but once I do that, um, I should be good. So this is this is good to help me understand all of this. Although, it took me an hour to do one lecture. And I think there's quite a bit that came out of it. There was about three things. I mean, good. So I might only do lecture five. To be fair. And how much is there of lecture five? Like four pages. And then I can do lecture six another time. And then hopefully by then I'll do my lecture seven. You know? And eight and nine, and I'll be able to catch up. So yeah, I'll do lecture five. I'll do one more lecture, and then I'll go straight into the programming and do that. Um, then I'll try and understand what I did wrong. Um, with with the uh, this, I mean. And I'll try and do some. I'll try and do at least one problem. If I can do one problem sheet tonight, that'd be pretty good. And I can leave the other one for tomorrow. You know, have a nice break, like, you know, stop from revising, I can just do some practice, which is always fun. Um, yeah, there you go. So I've got one problem sheet, I've got the thing, I'll try and memorise this, I've got a plan, I want to create a nice old plan, I might do, I've got a good calendar over there. And I've got to ask about them. Awesome. Sweet, right, let's move on. Um, right. And I know in the previous one, by the way, I was talking about like, oh, you have theorem 1.16 and definition 1.1. You don't, apparently, you don't need to learn which one goes with the definition. It's more just a thing that you, if you can learn at least your de all the definitions, you should be good for the exam. And if you learn the theorem and stuff, basically, if you just learn everything, you should be okay. I know it's crazy. Um, I might have our chocolate actually after this evening. When I go down, try and get some answers on this algebra stuff. Colin, I'll have chocolate. Um, right. So given the function a to b with a not equaling the empty set, it's injective if and only if there's a function that goes from g, uh, g a function g from b to a with g o f equaling the identity of a. Now we know the identity of a is a to a. G O F is you go in from a to b from b to a meaning going from a to a g is identity. And since the g is a left inverse basically means it's another function. So a left inverse is like um, if the f function is 3 plus x, or x plus 3, then the g function would be y minus 3. And it'd get you back to the same place. Right, and that's a left inverse because it's going left. Um, it's surjective if there is a function h from b to a, where f o h equals the identity of b, and the identity is b to b, f o h go from b to a, a to b, therefore you go from b to b. Um, right, so it's injective if g o f is equal to the identity of a. It's surjective if you do f o. So normally you do g o f, you always do f last for some reason. This is if you do f first and you get the identity of b. So this is slightly different. This is, so before it was 3 plus x and then g is uh, 1, so that's the same. So this is such that uh, if you put, so the other one was if f is 3 plus x and g is that, then g f of x is 3 plus x minus 3, which equals x. And that's the injective one because it's going from x to x. Surjective is you're subbing in 
y three plus y minus three, which equals y, which is in b. So it's from b to b. This is going from a to a. Okay. Cool. Um, and that's a right inverse because e's going to b, left inverse e going for a. Right. If bijective, if you have a function k going from b to a, where k o f equals the identity of a and f of k to the entity. That's just, again, a mixture of injective and surjective. And the proofs, you consider that f has a left inverse g, so g is going from b to a, and you can consider any points in a where, um, if you put them into the function, they get the same thing. So if the function is x squared, you can have x being 2, y being minus 2. Then you can say that 2 is equal to g f of x because um, g g f of f of x is a function g is b to a so if you sub in two so we have x squared in root two or root x if you subbed it two into there and you've got four g f of x means your um square rooting the square, which just leaves x, which is 2. Okay, that makes sense. So 2 equals gf of x, and f of x equals f of y, so gf of y equals y, therefore f is injective. Um, and then if f is injective, at any y in the image, the image is subset going to okay. If any b in the image, g of b or g of sorry, if you have a y in the image of f, g of that y equals a unique x such that f of x equals y. Because we know the image is a subset of a. And yeah, this is basically saying that if you have a um, a point in the subset of um, A, it's still going to have an f of x type thing. Is it? Uh, if you have a random thing in a subset, right, so you have a thing in a subset, you put that thing into g of, into the g function, um, the number from the subset is going to equal a unique f of x. Um, hmm. Why is that? If f is injective, so b in the image of f, so b is in a subset. If, if something is a subset of a subset, then it's a subset of the so if B is a subset of the image, which is a subset of F, a subset of A even, then B is a subset of A, right? Um, therefore, little b is in A. It's basically saying, if you sub that thing in A and put it into the G function, so then you're going from the subset to it, it would equal f of x. Uh, I don't understand this. This one's a bit tricky. Oh. <laughs> you have a y in the image, and the image, right, I'm going to crash piece of data. So image of f is, uh, do we have anything that's a subset of it? No. So we're going to assume that's x to a, okay, in, and we know f is a to b and g is b to a. Then something in the image is in A. So basically we're taking something from A 
you then stick that in B, it's going to equal a function of F. You then sub that in B, okay, so that's X squared, so that's root X. You should have subset, so something will think you run me. Root X. I don't like it. I don't like it's a subset of that. That set can be anything. So we're going to pretend that the thing that's just come out is 2. Then root 2 is meant to be something, is meant to be an f of x. But f of x does not do to. It doesn't make any sense. <sighs> All right, so we assume somehow f of x can equal b, equal y, um, and then if y isn't in the image, then you just let g of that equal any element. Right. Then for any x in A, f of x is in the image, and g f of A is g f of x is equal to x, which we've already figured out. Has no other um, x in A has no other y in A has an f of y equal f of x plus it equals the identity. I'm basically just trying to prove that, um, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm trying to prove. That's a tricky one. All right, I'll take that into care for a moment. All right, so the subjectivity, oh, they have a right in the page. For any y, uh, f h of y, because why would we know that? So if you set x equal to h of y, that gives any x and a such that f of x equals y. h of y equals x, then f of x equals y. Makes sense. Um, therefore, it's subjective, and if it's subjective, then for each y and b, you can choose an x and a such that f of x equals y. And then you can set um, h of that y equals x. And therefore, f h of y equals f of a equals y. Therefore, um, function f, f composite h equals the identity because we've basically just gone from FH, yeah, I'm, I'm just, oh. FH of B, B, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. This is the same thing, I don't understand that. So G goes from real to real such that x maps to 3x plus 2 um injective because no matter what you sub into that it'll get a unique answer um, it's surjective because every single number can be mapped to via that and therefore it's bijective um then you say the inverse of g, so if g is uh, that real real, such that x goes to 3x plus 2, the inverse of that it would basically be, say that was a, instead of real to real, that'd be a to b, that'd be b to a, such that y maps to y minus 2 over 3. So that's basically what I've been doing, if f is a to b and g is b to a, then g is the inverse of f. So then if you composite the inverse with itself, so g inverse composite g, 
But um, you're subbing G into that, which is with X. You're subbing the everything from G, which is through X plus 2, into the inverse, which is Y minus 2 over 3, which is with X. And if you do it the other way, you get Y. Because uh, it makes sense. It's the same way as this. Pretty much. Uh, if F is injective, then the left inverse G is surjective. Hmm. If F is injective, everything in A maps to its own thing in B. B then maps to a, so everything A has been mapped to at least once, yeah, makes sense. If F is subjective, so everything in B is mapped to at least once, um, so right inverse is conjective. Again, if everything is mapped to at least once um, in B, then B going to A means everything in A is having a unique thing mapped to it. So everything in A has only been mapped to once. Yeah. And uh, bijective, and then the inverse is bijective, which makes sense if A, B, B, or G is the same thing, yeah. And that's all providing A doesn't equal the empty set because uh, there exists. Oh, there, there exists some injective f going from a to b, if and only if there exists some subjective g going from b to a. Okay, great. Um, as the composite of g o f equals the identity of a, which we learned previously, f is a right inverse of g, which means um, f if g is b to a and f is a to b then f is a right inverse of g it would mean it goes from b to b which would then mean g is subjective which we've already done we've already proved already proved that <laughs> We already proved if f and if f and g is subjective, then g or f is subjective. And if f is a right inverse of g, then f is subjective, and g is subjective, therefore g or f is subjective. Well, g or f is they're basically saying the same thing. G or f is subjective, f is subjective, then g is subjective. It's like a reverse thing, and then you know f or h. F of H is injective, um, and F is injective, then H is injective, and then you find the meaning pretty easy. I don't make sense. And if you're given an F, take G to be. Oh, what's this? What's, what's this all about? Um, A to the empty set, right? If you're given an f, where it goes from, uh, take g to be the left inverse, okay, that's fine, it means g is injective. And if you're given a g, take f to be a right inverse, meaning f is surjective, uh, that would then mean that b could not equal the empty set if a should not equal the empty set, and g is surjective. Understand that that entire lecture I don't understand, so I'll rewatch that one before I go down. I'm just going to rewatch the lecture just because I don't like the topic. Um, right, a is equal to the empty set is needed. A is not equal to the empty set is needed, as there's no function of b to the empty set if b doesn't equal the empty set. There is an injection from empty set to b, so that makes sense. So it says. Something in the empty set can map to one thing in B, which is the empty set. It's, it's injective. It's not bijective. Uh, it's subjective, sorry. Uh, well, bijective, but it's not subjective. And we know 
uh, if you have the function f and you square it, that's ff of x because f is a to b and you're squaring that times thing f by f plus x squared and you times it by if you have x cubed if you have x cubed is normally better and you times x cubed by itself if the function is x cubed well here that's either x cubed times x cubed which equals x factor six hold up whoa take a step back what oh what <sighs> f squared equals f composite f, so it equals f f of x. So if you're timesing f by itself, I don't understand this entire lecture. So I'll leave it there. Um, I'm going to rewatch lecture five because I don't understand it. I'll do that later. Um, and yeah, that's the end of the video. I kind of died towards the end, I'm not going to lie. I kind of got a bit knackered. And then when I was moving on to the last one, I was like, oh, I just cannot be asked. But um, that's what doing all this work does to you. Um, so, yeah, see you later, alligators.